So this is a landscape. This is a picture of a landscape. Sorry, it kind of flashes out there. Okay, and you'll notice that there is a house in this one, um, but you'll notice there, this is the foreground. Yes, there's words here. It's from a magazine. Um, there's trees here, and then there's hills, and then there's um, even more hills, and you can kind of tell that there's trees on them, but it's, there's not a lot of detail. So that is an example of a landscape, okay? And my definition of a landscape, um, first of all, it is a noun, okay? Um, it is a picture representing a view of natural inland scenery, a portion of territory that can be viewed at one time from one place. So if you walked out of your house, it wouldn't be amazing if this was your, um, it would be amazing if this was your, uh, scenery outside of your house. But if you walk outside of your house, what you see um, usually is a landscape, okay? So we are going to um, make our own landscape with this worksheet right here. So you need this worksheet and you need some scissors, okay? And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to see how there's kind of a line right here. It was very, very light but it is on your worksheet. So if you would fold on that line, so I'm gonna kind of fold back on that line. It doesn't really matter how, which way you fold it, but you do want a nice straight fold on that line. Nice crease. Let's go ahead and do that. Then we're going to fold right where this line goes down and the copy didn't really make a very good line there, but you're gonna fold the whole piece of paper that way too. So I'm gonna fold it like this till I get right about on that line. Fold it there too. So we have two folds, one here and one there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut on this very irregular line. Okay, so you're gonna cut this. So go ahead and get your scissors and start cutting on this line the whole way across the piece of paper. It's a little difficult. I'm going pretty fast. You don't have to be precious about this. This is not, I wouldn't even consider this artwork, you know? This is, this is our example or our um, notes or our practice, okay? So this is not necessarily um, something that you have to be perfect with. I'm certainly not being perfect with it. So when you're done, you'll have two halves like that. So you can take this part here and kind of move it off away out of sight. And now we're gonna use this. This is gonna end up folding up. I wanna show you what it ends up looking. Well, I don't have one here. Uh, I'll, I guess I won't show you. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna color on this part. So you wanna get out your colored pencils my colored pencils. And you want to find a dark green, a light green, a dark blue, a light blue, a red, a brown, the two browns, and a black. And you can just get these out as I call them out. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to use is my dark green though, and I'm going to make some bushes down here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, okay, and I'm just going to make some bushes. I'm going to make this bush right about there. 
And then I'm going to make another bush that kind of is overlapped by that one there. And then you can take your lighter green and just color it in. So I'm just making some big circles. I am not, again, I'm not being precious with this. I'm just getting an idea down on paper. Okay, so you can see here, um, I just colored it in real quick. Quick, 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 quick. Okay, with the light green. <clears throat> and next, let's see what we're gonna use. We're gonna use, I think the black or the, the black or the gray. I'm not sure if you have black or gray. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to, I only have black. So I'm going to make some kind of lumpy, bumpy, oblong type stones. These are going to be stones in a river. And I'm just outlining the stones and then I'm just lightly coloring them in. I don't want it to be very dark. So I'm using the side of my pencil and I'm holding my pencil way back. And I'm just lightly coloring in. You don't want it to be dark for the stones. So it's, mine's kind of gray. That's why I said gray would work. This color I'm going to use is blue. And I'm going to just fill in this almost like it's, well, it is water. I meant for it to be water like a little stream or pond or something. And I'm gonna use my light blue to fill in all the rest of this up here. But since it is, this is in the foreground, so we are coloring the foreground right now. I don't know if I said that yet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna then take my darker blue, and sometimes you have to read on here and see if it's blue or purple or black, right? This one's indigo blue. Um, and I, so I'm gonna add some detail. So I'm gonna put some darker blue off on the edges and kind of blend it in a little bit. Again, I'm just using the side of my pencil. I am not using the tip, I am using the side. I'm just getting some a little bit more detail in here. Um, to make it a little bit more detailed because the foreground has more detail. Okay. So that is our little foreground scene. Zoom out just a little bit. Okay. So the next part, we are actually going to flip the whole thing over. So now we are on the back of this and see how this can flip up and over. Thanks, Taylor. Okay, so we are on the back now. We're gonna draw the middle ground on the back because this is gonna end up folding up like a little trifold. Okay, so we're going on the back. So this should be blank. This whole thing should be blank. And we're going to draw, um, <clears throat> I'm looking for my example here. Too many things here, okay. So we're going to draw um, with our brown pencil. So look for your brown pencil. We're gonna draw um, a house on this side, since this is kind of like a house shape. And I want you to draw it pretty far down. See, I'm just doing sketchy lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. So that when I fold it over, some of the house is covered. I want some of the house to be covered. So that's how far down you should go. Maybe I should have even gone farther. I'll extend it a little bit. Okay, and we're just gonna make a very simple house. We're gonna put a door, let's put a door on this side, on the right side with a little doorknob. A big window here. 
so they can look out at their landscape. And then let's put a second floor with some windows. Put a line where the roof kind of is. And then put a big like circular window up top. So this is real rough, right? On purpose. Now you're gonna take a blue, a light blue, and you're going to color in the windows, kind of like the reflection of the sky. So I'm just going real quick, coloring in the windows. And then I'm gonna take like a tan. This says harvest gold, but it doesn't matter what it says. It's a light, light brown. And I'm just gonna color in, again, I'm, I'm coloring the house. I'm just using the side of my pencil and I am not pressing very hard. I am holding way back on the pencil so I don't get tempted to press too hard or use the tip. and I'm essentially scribbling, <laughs> is a building. Um, so I'm just gonna make a tall building here. I'm just kind of sketching it in. Tall, skinny building. I'm gonna make a double door, like a big double door. Kind of, um, this is going to be a deli, at like an apartment building with some, um, with a deli down below. So I'm gonna make a little sign here it kind of goes like this, you know, just a little, and I'll put deli in there. And then I'm just making like three rows of windows, kind of like apartments above a deli, like you'd see in downtown Snohomish. And then I'm just going to color in the windows with light blue. See how fast I'm going? It's because I don't want to be precious with this. I just want to get it done. And then for um, the building, let's make it like a brick building. So I'm just going to, well, I'm going to make a suggestion of a brick building. I am not going to put bricks on this. That would take too long, but I'm going to use red as my um, color for a brick building just to add some contrast to that yellow house next door. Um, I'm just filling in all the building really quickly. Again, not being precious. And then on the sign, I think I'll use black and I'll just put deli. So go ahead and work on the building. Okay, <clears throat> so, so far we have our foreground. See if you flip that over, there's the foreground, there's the middle ground. And if we flip this back, guess what we're gonna put up here? The background, okay? So I'm gonna unfold it so now I'm just on the side with the foreground. The middle ground looks blank, but it's just drawn on the back. And we're gonna work on this part right here. And I need to zoom out a little bit. This is our background. Um, we're just gonna put some hills and trees and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna take my dark green and below this part here, remember this is a building, below it. So about right there, I'm gonna make a hill with my dark green and then somewhere above it leave some space I'm gonna make another hill okay so I made two hills one below the edge of the building and one above it and the for the one above it we're gonna start at the top for the one above it, this is really far away from the viewer, so we're going to put some trees, but the trees are just going to be triangles like that. And you can put, you know, put three trees over here and then leave a little space and put some more trees over here. They can overlap if you want them to. Um, you can have another one here. And they're just like suggestions of trees. And then I'm gonna fill in the sky with blue because honestly, who doesn't want blue sky right now, right? So blue sky, I'm not gonna get fancy with clouds or anything. I'm just using the side of my colored pencil and filling this in. 
to give a suggestion of sky. And color pencil, I was just moving that little thing because colored pencil will pick up any texture that you have underneath. So if you're on a textured surface, then it, you'll pick up that texture. And that's okay for this, for this exercise. That's not a problem. Okay, so I'm just really quickly filling in. I'm kind of fussing too much really is what I'm doing. And then I'm going to jump down to the lower uh, hill here. I'm going to take my light green and I'm just going to make more, um, I'm going to make deciduous trees. So deciduous trees are the ones that kind of look like a cloud like that. So I'm going to make one there and I'll make one kind of here. And then I'm going to take my brown again and I'll make the branches and the trunk make the branches and the trunk again this is just like a suggestion of a tree I'm not getting fancy here and then I'm going to color in the tree kind of gets a little messy like that and then I'm going to use my dark green to fill in this ground here. Get that all filled. Again, I'm using the side of my pencil. I know I keep saying that, but it's an important thing to learn because later on we'll probably be using colored pencil again. And then I'm going to use my light green on this hill here, this close hill. And I want to get it down about halfway or a little bit farther than halfway. And of course, on camera, I still need to <laughs> um, sharpen, but you don't really need a sharp tip um, for colored pencils, especially not what we're doing today. We're, I'm just getting down some color. We could have done this with color crayons or um, markers or anything. Okay. So that is the next step. Here we go. So if you fold it all the way up now, you should have three layers. You have a background, a foreground, and a middle ground. And depending on where you put the trees, they might be overlapped and that's okay. Same with here with the, uh, the bush here and the house in the deli they're going to be overlapped. That is a good thing. That means that you have done the right thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our journal. This is my second period journal here. We're in second period and we're going to open it up. Let me zoom out a little bit more. We're going to open it up to, this is the front cover here. We're going to skip page one. We're going to go to page two and three. So remember when we numbered them, this is page two, this is page three. And what I'd like you to do is glue it down on the very left side of page two. So go ahead and do that. This is in the beginning of the journal, right? So our visual journal that we were working on before is way back here. We're now in the beginning of the journal. This is kind of like our, the beginning sections, kind of like our notes and our practices and our learning. So page one is blank. Usually that's a title page, but um, we haven't done anything with it. And then here is page two. And then we're going to do something else today on page three as well. Okay. You put this to the side just for a minute. We're going to cut some things out to glue on the right side of page three. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to get out my magazines and the National Geographic are the best to find. I should have put one in each bag, but if you have your own magazines, that works too. What we're going to do is you're going to flip through and you're going to find um, landscapes. And look at the first page on mine has a landscape. Okay, and you're going to find another landscape. It doesn't matter if it's black and white. This is actually a landscape too. Or color. 
okay? Um, but you need a good landscape, ha, <laughs> landscape, okay? And when you find a good one that will fit in your journal, um, like this, these sizes, I have all these little ones here that I've found throughout magazines. Um, you need two landscapes, okay? So if I gave you a travel magazine or National Geographic, uh, probably not the people magazines, but you want to find two landscapes. So I'll, t I'll pick a big and a little, and then you're just going to glue them in to your journal on page three on the very right side. So we have room in the middle for notes. So they do have to fit on here. Um, and if you get a really big one like this one, you could just cut a section out. You don't have to use the whole page. You could just cut a section out. So I'm just going to glue these on here and then later we will be writing notes in here.